Welcome back friends to the another video of Viluka. This is lesson number two. In previous lessons, means lesson number one, I have already told you about the VLOOKUP. That was the introduction lesson of VLOOKUP. And in that lesson, I already told about the three arguments of VLOOKUP. That is lookup value, table array and column index number. So what is mean by column index number and how to make it dynamically. And also I told you about what is table array and how to uh, select that table array and how to fix it. We have learned so much things in the introduction part. but there is one more argument that is fourth argument of VLOOKUP that is called range lookup. In that argument, we have two options. One, it is zero and another it is one. And what is meant by zero? Zero means exact match and one means closest match or we can say approximate match. But lot of people confuse where we should use zero or where we should uh, use one because a lot of people having good knowledge of VLOOKUP but they don't know is that really need to apply a fourth argument that is range lookup. Many people are thinking this is the optional argument we don't have to put it but let me tell you in some example it is compulsory argument too. Yes guys you have to put it and whether should we put zero or whether should we should put one that I'm going to tell you practically. So if you are guys interested to know about whether we should make a range lookup zero or one, then watch this video till the end. So let's get started now. So friends, I came up with another example to explain the range lookup concept in VLOOKUP. So let's go ahead and check it out. First, let me explain the data. It's very simple. In column A, we have an employee ID. In column B, we have a salesman that is our employees. In column C, we have a target. Target each salesman actually in the following months. And in column D, we have an incentive column. My task is to get the incentive percentage based on these targets. So I'll be using VLOOKUP to get the incentive from this table. I have already set the condition according to specific values look carefully to this target table. If a salesman achieve targets more than 1000, they get 40% incentive. If they achieve between 500 to 1000, they will get 30% incentive. If they achieve target between 250 to 500, they will get 20% incentive and so on and so forth. Now listen carefully. I will apply VLOOKUP to get this answer, but I don't want to just type the formula and show you the result. It only take a couple of minutes to do this, but I want you to understand the logic behind the formula, not just how to apply it. This way you can use the formula in other examples too. So if you have other data, you just need to apply VLOOKUP using your understanding, not just by memorizing the formula. For a quick refresh, let me tell you the definition of VLOOKUP again. I'm going to type uh, VL and then you'll get the definition. Look for the value in the leftmost column of a table and then returns a value in the same row from column that you specify. By default, table must be sorted in ascending order. I have explained this thing like looks for the value in the leftmost column of a table and then returns the same row value from a column that you specify in my previous lesson. If you haven't watched it, I recommended checking out the first video in the VLOOKUP which is given in the playlist and playlist link is given in the description. Please check it out first video and then jump to this video. Then you will understand the logic behind the VLOOKUP. Now just focus on the rest of the definition that is by default table must be sorted in ascending order. I didn't cover this the first lesson because it doesn't affect you when there is an exact match. In our previous example, we are using VLOOKUP as an exact match. If you see this one, I have applied a range lookup as an exact match. When there is a range lookup as an exact match means we are looking exactly match values like you type ID 1, 0, 1, 0. So you are looking for the employee informations of Adi Sambal, his age, gender and other informations of that employee. It means you are looking exact match. So if you are looking exact match, we don't need to sort our table in any order. Okay. Remember, if it is not sorted in ascending order, it is okay. If it is descending order, still you will get the answer because you're looking for exact match. These values looking for exact match. Let me show you the example. I'm going to sort this table in a descending order. So I just select this table entire table now i'll click on the data and go to this sort here it is the sort option sort will allow you to uh, sort data according to your requirement i'm going to select employee id and i'm going to set it largest to smallest means what i'm going to sort this column in a descending order now look at here so it is in a descending order still you are getting a result there is no problem at all 
so in our first lesson example it is okay if table is not sorted in ascending order but for this example we need to sort this table in ascending order currently it is in a descending order so we must sort this table in ascending order to do this click on data i'll click on sort then you will get one pop-up click on this sort by option select your column that I'm going to sort uh, according to target column. So I have selected it. Then we need to sort it as the smallest to largest. So it is already selected over here. I'm going to click on OK. So look over here now. It is sorted in a proper way. And once you've done it, you are ready to apply the formula. So let's go ahead and apply the formula here in an incentive column. Before we go ahead, let me tell you one more trick. Yeah, I'm going to tell you a trick. Uh, look over here. In this particular example, we are going to use this data as a table array so whenever we are going to add vlookup formula we are going to select this particular range as a table array but instead of selecting this range again and again i'm going to apply a name or add a name for this specific range so how to do it let's go ahead and check it out now i'm going to select from z1 to h7 so this is my table array and i will click on name box which is located over here okay so once i click on name box I will type the name for this particular table. I'm going to write incentive underscore table. Just remember one thing while applying the name, you cannot start this name with the numbers and also you cannot add a space between name. Instead of space, you can add a underscore sign over there. So I have written incentive underscore table and I'll hit the enter key on keyboard. Once I hit the enter key, this name is applied. And if you want to change this name, you cannot change from here. Of course, there is options to change this name. You have to click on formulas tab and here it is name manager. There is an option name manager. You just click on that. You will get pop up. And in this pop up, you will able to edit this particular name range. You can uh, set the new range and also you can delete it. But I'm not going to delete or edit. I'm just closing it. It is just for your information. Now let's apply the VLOOKUP formula here. I'm going to type is equal to VL, then press a uh, tab key on keyboard. Once you press the tab key, you will get a lookup formula. Now I'm going to select a lookup value because first we need the lookup value and we have selected the lookup value and look over here carefully now. Should we fix our lookup value is my question. So let me know in the comment box if we should fix it or not. Let me know. Come on, guys, put down a comment. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, so let me tell you about it. We shouldn't fix the lookup value because we have different target values. Look over here, different target values. When we drag the formula down, the lookup values will change. So we don't need to fix it. After the comma, we are going to select our table array. So I just put down a comma. I'm not going to fix this range because we have a different values for this particular example. We are looking a lot of different values in a lookup value. So when I'm going to drag this formula, C2 should be become C3, then it should become a C4, C5 and C6 and so on and so forth. So that's why I'm not going to fix this one. So I'm putting a comma to select the table array. So instead of selecting table here, I'm going to type I and only I N. Why? Because I have already defined the name for this particular range and that will appear automatically once you type the first two or three letters of that particular name range. So once you type I N, press the tab key on keyboard, you will get complete range over here. And as soon as you select or press the tab key, you will able to see the selection over here too. Okay. So why we have defined the name for a particular range? Because we have to select this particular incentive table again and again and selection will take a time. Also, we need to fix it once you select the range. So if you apply the name for this particular range, then you don't need to fix it. Means you don't need to press F4, right? Of course, you don't need to do it. And this is the easiest way to select the table array and uh, also the smartest way. So now let's go ahead and check it out. The next argument that is column index number. So I'm going to put a comma and next argument is column index number. So for this example, we have a two columns in our table array. Look at here. Target is our first column. Incentive is our second column. And we have only two columns. We are not having more than two columns. And also we are not looking multiple columns as I have shown you in a previous example. So for this example, we are fetching values from column number two only. We have column number one in Z and column number two in H. So I'm going to type only a two. 
we don't need to apply any kind of formula over here we don't need a dynamic values over here just put down a two because we are looking for incentive and incentive only the values that is available in h column and we are looking that values only so that's why here column index number will be a fix and that is not dynamic so i'm going to put a two only here it is our next argument we need to put down the range lookup value look at here once i press the comma you will get two options to add there if you put next argument range lookup as a zero it will look for an exact match and if you put one over here guys it will look for approximate match instead of one you can also write a true over here i can write it true over here and instead of zero you can go for the false over here for this example you cannot use zero or false if you do you will get an error because the value 77 that you are looking for look over here in this particular value particular target value okay that is not available in your target table we can say table array we are not having 77 exactly match in this table do we have no we don't have also look over other values also 613 this is also not available exactly in this table but it is available somewhere in the table range right if you check it out carefully the 77 is available between 50 and 100 the 613 is available between 500 and 1000 right so these target values are available in this particular range but it is not exactly available it is available in a closest match we can say approximate match so that's why i'm telling you for this example you cannot use zero which is exact match or false we can say if you do you will get an error that i already told you because we are looking approximate match since exact match is not available in our values so remember use one or true to get the approximate match in a such a cases where you are looking the value between the range so now i'm going to type one for an approximate match and now you can find out the answer look at over here i'm going to close it if i type a zero look over here now i'm going to show you result if i type a zero over here and just close the bracket and uh, press the enter key on keyboard now you will see the result there is error now guys because 77 which is not exactly available in our target table so now let's go ahead and edit this formula by double clicking on it and instead of zero we have to go for one and uh, I'm going to type one and press enter. Once you press enter, you will get a result over there. I will drag this formula across the entire range. And one thing I have to do it, the format is not coming in a proper way. So I'll click on home tab and select the percentage sign over here. Once you select or click on this percentage sign, now you will able to see the proper result. For example, 77 falls between 50 to 100, right? 50 to 100. So it should be a 5 percentage. And 613 falls between 500 to 1000 so it should be 30 percentage right the results are coming out correctly if you see approximate match you will get the proper answer but again remember this table must be sorted in ascending order uh, look over here i'm going to sort it in descending order what will happen now i'll just show you the demo i'll click on data tab then sort inside sort by i'll select the target and i'll go for the largest to smallest what happened guys there is error with the result you will not able to see the correct result now so go again click on sort and you can do it undo also but i'm just putting smallest to largest and you'll get the proper result look or everywhere you'll get the proper percentage over here so remember two things in this particular lesson i have explained you about it one uh, it is the tip that i have told you already uh, when you use the VLOOKUP formula instead by selecting range each time just type the first few letters and you will get that particular name range name but before that we have to define the name and for that we have to select the range and type the name inside the name box and press the enter key that's it and always remember while applying the name you should not be add a space between name also you cannot start with the number this is a more efficient way to manage your table ranges if you need to change the name you can go to the formulas tab again remember click on name manager and here you can manage like edit add and uh, delete and another things you should remember whenever you are looking for the closest match of values you should have to put down range lookup as a one look at here i have already type a range lookup as a one if you're looking for exact match then use a zero if you're looking for closest match then go for one so that's it for this lesson on the range lookup in vlookup i have more lessons in this series and i want you to learn step by step if you found this video useful please like it and share it with your friends 
who want to learn VLOOKUP in detail. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get the notification for further lessons including lesson number three and other interesting topics. If you want to practice on this particular data, I have put down the file in the description. You can check it out that one also guys. And one more thing I would like to tell you if you are interested to learn Microsoft Excel, Power BI and SQL like courses from me, then just go inside the description and check it out with the links. So thank you for watching. See you in the next lesson. Take care. Bye bye.